Joining us tonight, we still have Mr. Shishadri Chari of the BJP, Siddharth Bhatia, founding editor of The Wire, joining us tonight, uh, Mukund Padmanabhan, editor of The Hindu, and Mr. Shahid Siddiqui, editor of Nay Dunya, here in the studio with me. Uh, Siddharth Bhatia, uh, what, what would you say to the question that we're asking tonight? Is the press really free in India? What did you think of the Prime Minister's tweets, what uh, Smriti Rani said today? Uh, you believe what they're saying? Well, I couldn't really uh, fully understand what uh, Smithy Rani was saying. There was a bit of an echo. But I'm very happy that the Prime Minister took the time off to tweet and tweet uh, his support for a free and independent media. Uh, is the media free in India? Uh, uh, nominally, yes. Uh, journalists are uh, free to write. There is no direct government <coughs> control. Is it in practical terms free? Well, we know that there are pressures on the media of various kinds. They come from owners, managements, advertisers, sometimes political parties and governments. And uh, I'm surprised and really uh, I have to say this a bit sadly, sometimes the pressures on journalists are from journalists themselves. So we are actually in a very uh, precarious situation at this moment. Uh, and the press freedom is not something we should take for granted. You were talking about Rajasthan Patrika's blank editorial. I remember uh, uh, blank editorials in 1975 to 1977. It's a very serious thing to do. It's not something that a paper does on a whim. So um, it's uh, clearly there is disquiet. Clearly there people are worried. Um, I'm not going into the statistics of the journalists dying or being sued. Those are really serious. I know what about uh, being about sued. Uh, uh, but, um, you know, journalists being arrested. So, it is not the happiest of situations at the moment. The press is free, but is it really free? And I'm not sure I can answer that with, a convi with conviction to say it is really free. Uh, Mukut Padmanabhan, what do you think? Uh, I, I mean, do you agree with Siddharth Bhatia? He calls the situation today precarious for the media. Uh, and he's asking whether, you know, you know, he's saying the press is free, but is it really? What do you think? Are we doing our job? Are we doing our job? Well, I mean, I think we are doing our job. And I, you know, to answer your first question, I think I, I more or less agree uh, with Siddharth on this. I think the picture is mixed. Um, I think if we compare ourselves to many of our neighbors, we are in a, in a better situation. In fact, we've been in a better situation for many, many years now. Uh, but are we in an ideal situation? And this is, a, this is the question Siddharth posed as, posed as well. Far from it. I think if we're looking at government as, you know, as a source of pressure, as a source of chilling effect, I think that's one aspect to it. The other aspect I think that we sometimes need to talk about a little more is the laws that we have and the use to which these laws are put, sometimes by the government, and sometimes uh, by even, you know, groups that uh, use sections of the law such as uh, 153A and 295A, insult laws if you like. And these also, I think, play an important role in having a chilling effect on uh, people. Well, uh, and the press. And, 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 and we're seeing that actually happening to the wire right now as it's being slammed with criminal defamation and, you know, Siddharth is among those who's having to go and make personal court appearances. But Shahid Siddiqui, there's also a fundamental question about whether we as journalists are doing our jobs. And everybody today is getting labelled in these binaries, especially on social media. But, uh, you know, are we, as, as uh, on the whole, with some exceptions, asking tough enough questions, particularly of the establishment? No. I think the media scenario has changed so fast in last few years that even media people are not able to decide what is their job. Are they there just to inform or are they there also to ask tough questions to the government? Put the government of the day in the dock. In the past, the idea was of the media was that it has to put the government of the day in the dock and three... For once in five years, people vote. But four years and three, sixty-four days, it is the media which is asking questions to the government. But I, it seems it is not happening anymore. But more pressure, I think, is also coming from the fact that today so many medias have emerged, the social media especially, the electronic media, and media is now no more talking of subtle 
issues. There are so many shades into a truth. Those shades are not possible to express now. It is now either right or wrong, black no and white. Either you are with me or you are against me. So, and electronic media has changed that tremendously. And now the social media, which is also being overtaken by various vested interests. Those vested interests are now putting pressures on even on the press and the media. Media people, if they want to put various shades of the truth into limelight, they are attacked, they are trolled, and they, they sometimes are under pressure not to speak out. And that, I think, is a much bigger threat today than, than even the government or, or the, the, the corporate sector which, which pro provides the, which in a way finances the uh, <coughs> media. Well, um, Mr. Chari, it's interesting also about the media's relationship with government and, uh, and, and with our leaders. Uh, now, uh, you know, in the United States, it's, very, it's a very hostile relationship that Donald Trump has with the press and every day he tweets about the fake New York Times and runs them down. And yet, you know, he did go to the New York Times and he does do interviews and he, you know, he has to take questions from the press. Here, the Prime Minister is very selective in giving his interviews if he does them. He hasn't held a, a press conference. Uh, I don't remember the last time he did. It's not just him. Uh, even regional leaders, uh, you know, very rarely in this country uh, really take questions from the media. Uh, I think I want to ask you whether if the PM really believes in a, in, in a free, vibrant press, why doesn't he have a press conference regularly and meet us and, and take questions from us? You know, all those things that you have said now do not really match up to the parameters of press freedom. You cannot, one cannot really quantify the press freedom. Freedom of the press is a different thing. And uh, we should also not forget that freedom of the press and the form uh, and the practice of ethical journalism are two sides of the same coin. So you cannot have absolute freedom and no ethics as far as journalism practice is concerned or you cannot have a ethical journalism with absolutely no freedom of the press. And for all those people who have seen emergency 42 years back and I was the editor of organizer and during 1975 organizer was not just banned, it was closed. It's it, the electricity to organizer and motherland at that time was put off and organizer was shut down. So from there and, and, and we have seen many other kinds of uh, restrictions on the newspapers in 1975. And, and if some one particular newspaper comes out with a blank editorial, I think that particular paper is also overdoing what they should be not doing or doing. Therefore, I think if you if you really ask me, there is enough press freedom. Press is not the only instrument that deals with the government. Think about the ownership of the media. Is, is a journalist today under attack only from the government? Think of a journalist who is told what to write and what not to write. Newspapers are no longer uh, edited by intellectuals. Newspapers are no longer, editorials are no, no longer written from the point of view of being justice or not justice. There is no ethics in writing uh, some of the editorials. The editorials are written if, if it has to please the owner of the newspaper or it has to please the owner of the television channel. I don't so disagree press freedom with you on is that, challenged uh, media not ownership only is by an political issue, authority, but, it is also challenged by the Chari, management. But Mr. Chari, ha, you know, being able to freely question the country's prime minister and our leaders, you know, is also part of something the free press should do. And here we can't do that. We can't, we, ha, we haven't had a single press conference where we could just ask the prime minister anything. See, no, so no, why do you, why do you, why, why do you, why do you relate the freedom of the press, freedom of the media to Prime Minister addressing the press conference? What is but it to do? The Prime Minister need not address a press conference it's one at way all. communication. There have been Prime Ministers who have not, 
Dr. Manmohan Singh, Dr. Manmohan, how many press conferences did All Dr. Manmohan Singh attend? When he travelled, he did it every time he travelled abroad on his plane. Does it mean there plane. was no press freedom even at that time? No, no, he did. He had press conferences see, every time he travelled. You can't, On the you plane, can't, he would take political quantify. questions, international, any, any see, questions. These Here, ca- you know, these even press things, conferences at, at, uh, at uh, you know, these, summit these meetings have stopped. These things cannot even be... questions at that. No, I, I, no, I'm only I'm saying... I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Don't raise your voice, uh, Nidhi. Right, try to understand. I mean, uh, that uh, another point that I wanted to make, I was thinking whether to make that point or not. What has happened is, today the media is run not by journalists but by anchors. Anchors are more important than journalists, than newspaper people. I'm sure, I know you're talking so about the North Korean TV channel. freedom are channels. we talking about? I, I know, I'm sure, I hope they're listening to your advice. No, I'm not talking I, I, about anyone talking about individual. Them, I, I do hope that they're heeding your advice. Uh, because, you know, some of us have been journalists for almost 20 years now, reporting and anchoring. Uh, there are some others who sit behind a desk and pontificate. So I hope they do listen to your advice. You're absolutely right. But, no, you know, no, no. Mukhan not, Padmanabha, not there is another about, issue here. Not it's not just about, about Mr. Modi's press conferences. I'm not talking conferences. about any individual. No, no. Since you made that uh, uh, remark, I, I, I understand who, who, who you meant it. Who, who, who you meant it for? But Mukun, there's there's another uh, there's another issue as well, and you know things that happen to the press, say in Delhi, in Bombay, these are issues that get highlighted all the time. Uh, I think uh, a lot of us have had, uh, you know, in the last year or so, or maybe more, had a chance to introspect about whether we're doing enough to stand up for our colleagues in small town India. Uh, you know, who really, you know, sort of stick their necks out and are doing good journalism and often coming under tremendous pressure in the various states that they work in. Uh, Mukund, do you think we're doing enough to stand up for their voices? No, I think that's an excellent question, Nidhi, because uh, one of the things uh, I think is worth thinking about, particularly, uh, you know, since most of these debates about freedom of the press are held in in sort of rarefied places and amongst people who enjoy that freedom or enjoy it to a a fair degree is where the real chilling effect happens and if you look at say the press and uh, I think it's worth going down to the district level and you know getting into the skin of say a district reporter and to see the kind of real pressures that he he or she deals with in the manner of a collector of, or an SP of what kind of leeway that, you know, that person has in, in doing with our job. So sometimes I think we, we <laughs> focus on the center too much, and this is no, no defense of, you know, whatever has been happening at the center at the moment. But we ignore sometimes that the real chilling effect sometimes can happen in the regions as well. And then if you happen to be a newspaper located in a particular state, I think the dynamic is, you know, how do you deal with, you know, uh, the government of the day? So I think this is a good question. I think sometimes we uh, we need to think of 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 people at the grassroots, journalism at the grassroots, when considering this issue about freedom of the press, and we don't do that often enough. 